Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 545, What to Say When Your Primary Care Doctor Questions Your Use of Bioidentical Hormones. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about how to talk to your primary care doctor when he freaks you out and makes you worried about the hormone therapy treatment that you're getting from your hormone doctor. Um, Usually primary care doctors don't know anything about bioidentical hormones. They don't really understand how they work and why they're superior to the synthetic hormones. And they also have not been educated on the safety of uh, bioidentical hormone uh, therapy. So it's very important not to be dissuaded from getting the hormone therapy that has made you come back to life and feel normal again uh, because your primary care worries about it or makes you worry about it. So there are some very common questions or questions that a primary care doctor will bring up to my patients who then come to me and go, oh my gosh, my primary care doctor is so worried about me because I'm taking testosterone and it's going to do something to me. And I said, did they say what they were, it was going to do to you? And no, no, they just said it was dangerous. Okay. So that's the first thing I, I hear most frequently. And then I ask, I ask my patient and you should ask yourself, if you're taking testosterone and you're female, and it has brought you back to life. It has given you your sex drive. It's made your body look better. It's made your attitude ha- happier. Less less insomnia, m- better sleep, better mental state, better memory. I mean, there are so many things that testosterone does for us. It even helps our skin. It helps our it literally helps our hair grow. It helps our growth hormone go up. All of those things make us feel better. And then when you go to your primary care doctor and they say, oh, it's going to, something bad's going to happen. My first question to them would be, what's going to happen? You know, if their worst thought is facial hair, well, we can prevent that by using spironolactone uh, preventively with our patients who get testosterone. So now next, what's next? Testosterone in women and men doesn't cause heart disease. It doesn't cause cancer. It doesn't do anything bad to us. It makes our it makes our bones thicker, it makes our muscles stronger, it makes our stamina better, and it helps us live longer. It prevents the diseases of aging. I talk about this in, ex- in a lo- long, extensive discussion in, my, in our book, The Secret Female Hormone. That's the one for women. And I also talk about the safety of testosterone for men in my book, Got Testosterone? Question mark. That's, it's, it's supposed to be Got Testosterone. Um, but those are the two books that have the most backup for what I'm saying, but I've seen thousands of patients come back to life, get their marriages back, get their bodies back, get their brains back. I mean, aging is basically a loss of testosterone and then everything that follows after that. So giving you back testosterone that is bioidentical, just like the testosterone you used to make in your ovary or in your testicles is very safe. It just cranks the clock backwards. So it is not hurting your body, it's actually helping you. So when that, when a doctor, a primary care doctor makes you want to question the safety or mostly the safety of testosterone, that's usually what they say, but they don't have any backup for it. And they don't have any real, real um, fundamental reasons that you shouldn't take it, except they don't know anything about it, then you can say back to them, I feel better, my symptoms are gone, and this has given me back my sex life and my marriage. How can you argue with that? And it is not going to shorten your life. I can guarantee that. 
So testosterone is very healthy for both men and women. I, and I want to give you that information so that you'll have something in your back pocket if you are questioned about this with your, uh, from your primary care doctor. My, the next question I get <laughs> from my female patients is, um, does estrogen cause breast cancer? And their doctors probably haven't been updated on, on the newest facts that the WHI study was false or what they told the public about it was false. The WHI study uh, back in 2001 told doctors and patients um, in a, uh, I, I guess they had a uh, press release that hormones cause breast cancer. Well, the hormone that causes breast cancer in that study was Provera, which is not a natural hormone. It's used as a progestin to balance out the synthetic estrogens that are given to women in the form of Premarin Provera. In that part of the study, women did have higher rates of breast cancer when they took Premarin and Provera. So that part of the study was showed some danger from actually Provera. When we look at the arm of the study where Premarin or just estrogen was used, estrogen decreased the risk of breast cancer and it decreased the severity or the, uh, the virility of the breast cancer that did happen if it did occur. So when we really look at the study, actually read it, estrogen decreases the risk of breast cancer if you're taking it postmenopausally or even premenopausally and if you're taking it without Provera. That means those patients that took it without Provera generally had had a hysterectomy because that's the safest way for a, a non uh, a pa patient without a uterus to take it. People with a uterus have to take a progesterone. In my world, we give pure progesterone. We don't give progestins because of that risk. We are very safety conscious. Most of the doctors who give bioidentical hormones do not use a progestin because they know the risks. And it is changed by the liver, if it's an oral, um, if it's an oral tablet, into estrone, the old lady estrogen that can stimulate breast cancer. Estradiol isn't giving you that same kind of problem. So when your doctor says, stop that, it's going to cause breast cancer. It does not cause breast cancer. We stop it after a patient has breast cancer with estrogen receptors because breast cancer is actually quite different than the breast. It, estrogen doesn't initiate the change in your blood cells, excuse me, in your breast cells. But if your breast cells have already changed, then estrogen could stimulate the growth of a breast cancer, but it doesn't cause it. That's quite different. It's why we always ask for a mammogram before we start estrogen, estradiol, in a natural form. We use pellets for patients who have a family history of breast cancer. Actually, every patient who's over the age of 40 has to have a mammogram before we uh, give them any kind of estradiol. So we are being very safe, and that's important for uh, you. We're making sure that you get your mammogram yearly to make sure if you were to get breast cancer for, for any reason, family history, obesity, drinking too much, any of the risk factors for breast cancer, that we are not going to make it worse. In fact, most of the cancers that do happen in patients with bioidentical estrogen are very low grade, not, not virulent, haven't gotten out of the breast and haven't gone and caused any damage or metastasized. So, so in a way, it's keeping you from getting a severe kind of breast cancer if you do take bioidentical estrogen, especially in the form of pellets, they're the safest. Um, so no, breast cancer is not caused by estrogen use. On the flip side of that for men, the old belief, which was based on a study of three people for which a doctor got a Nobel Prize when he said, Testosterone causes prostate cancer. This is back in the 1940s. He actually had one patient that got prostate cancer. Re, he had already had prostate cancer. He was given uh, testosterone and he had a recurrence. We don't know if he 
had all the prostate cancer removed before that. We don't know a lot about that. But we know that he had one patient that he gave testosterone to who then had a recurrence of his prostate cancer. That's not a study. I mean, studies nowadays have thousands and thousands of people in them and are tested by using testosterone and testing patients to see if testosterone actually takes a normal person and causes them to have uh, prostate cancer. And it doesn't. Uh, Dr. Morgan Taylor, who has a book called Testosterone for Life, is the, um, he's the guru of prostate cancer. He's uh, Harvard trained and is at um, one of the Boston hospitals. I'm sorry, I can't remember the Boston hospital that he has privileges at, but he does research as well. And the most impressive research that he does is important and very easy to understand. He took, he took prostate cells, he did a biopsy of older men, and he did a biopsy, he took prostate cells from young men, and the young men had high testosterone levels and their, their cells were normal, and the older men had slightly abnormal prostate cells and their testosterone was low. He took the blood from the young men Gave, put it in with the cells from the old men. And you know what happened? They became normal. High testosterone levels made those se prostate cells revert to normal. Now that is not cancer. And when he took the blood from the older men with the low testosterone levels and he put it in with the cells from the young men, it made them abnormal. So this is the opposite of what we've been trained. Uh, to understand as doctors. This is the opposite of what we, we were taught based on a very s one person and everybody believes it. It's ridiculous. I don't know how we can possibly change this mentality in medicine and in the culture, but testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. So that is not one of the worries that we have. We worry about men going years with low testosterone levels and then getting prostate cancer. And that's much more of a common occurrence. So generally people with prostate cancer and severe prostate cancer have never taken testosterone and have had low testosterone for a long time. So I wanna reassure you about that. And then if your doctor brings this up, you can just say, you know, that's an old, that's an old, type of thought and belief. And Dr. Morgan Taylor from, uh, from Harvard has disproven this. And we, we don't, nobody should believe this anymore after this past research study that he's done. So you have, I, in my practice, don't see it. I don't, I don't see very much prostate cancer, except if a patient comes in who's had a low testosterone for a long time, he's fine right now, but his cells were starting to change and we couldn't pick it up on PSA, and then in the near future, he could develop prostate cancer. But thats it's rare when somebody's been on testosterone for a long time for them to actually have prostate cancer because it protects them. The other thing about testosterone when we're talking about uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer is testosterone is an immune stimulator. So testosterone, uh, if you have a normal testosterone level, like young people do, your immune system is much better at that time than it is later on as your testosterone drops. When you get testosterone back or given to you in a natural form, your thymus, which sits right behind your breastbone, uh, actually is stimulated to make more T cells and T helper cells. Where have you heard about those cells before? Well, those are the cells that are missing in patients with AIDS, and those are the cells that when they're missing, AIDS patients get cancers. You need a lot of T cells and T helper cells to prevent cancer. Because every day, if you're looking at your body, at every cell, cells become cancerous, and then your body kills them. So you need to have an immune system that is excellent to kill cancer cells before they become anything more than a, a, an abnormal cell. So this is one of the ways testosterone makes you healthier. Your immune system is necessary throughout your life. And it's one of the things that falls off and makes us less likely to live very long because as you get older and your immune system decreases its, its ability to actually 
kill cells, kill viruses, kill bacteria, it makes us more fragile. And then we're more likely to have a terrible infection that kills us than somebody who's 20 or 30 or 40. So, so that's the other part of testosterone that helps protect you from cancer. And so this is why I say these things because there are so many physiologic reasons. My experience with my patients confirm this and research that is in the recent past, not in 1940, tells us that testosterone does not cause prostate cancer in men. So that's another question I get all the time and it's generated by somebody's doctor who makes them so afraid that they're gonna end up not taking testosterone which will then cause them to have prostate cancer. I find this to be counterproductive. And um, in general, if a physician doesn't understand or know about something and doesn't have hard facts, they probably shouldn't judge another physician's care. So um, let's talk about a different hormone, but this is still hormone therapy. We treat low thyroids at our office partially because nobody else treats them adequately. There's several reasons for this. If you have low thyroid, you've probably had a hard time finding a doctor who will give you anything other than levothyroxine or Synthroid. They're the same thing. One's the generic and one's the brand. Levothyroxine and Synthroid are just one of the two thyroid hormones. It's T4. You have T4 and T3. You need both of them. Well, it turns out that when they developed Synthroid, um, Everybody stopped using natural thyroid, which was what was used up until then called armor thyroid. And they didn't test Synthroid when they brought the drug out with women. They tested men because men were easier because they didn't have periods. They didn't get pregnant. They didn't, you know, they didn't have to worry about any of those things. Well, men do a very good job of taking T4 and making T3, and Synthroid is generally a good drug for them, the synthetic thyroid. Not always, but more men uh, can tolerate the pure T4 and convert it into T3. So I usually start men on Synthroid. Um, however, most women cannot make T3 out of their T4. It's not fully explained, although in this month's endocrine journal, the uh, Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, there are two articles. One is the one that says women need testosterone. Finally, you guys got the message. And the second one is women and um, a per high percentage of women cannot take Synthroid or Levothyroxine alone and, be, and get their symptoms resolved or get back to a normal thyroid. What I hear from other doctors who don't know this or um, don't ask their patients about the symptoms of low thyroid, which should be asked of you when you go in to see if your if thyroid medication is adequate, you should be asked by the physician, do you have these symptoms that you had before you started thyroid? Like, do, are you still cold all the time? Is your basal temperature low, like below 98? Um, do you, is your hair falling out? Are your eyebrows out here falling out? Um, do you have dry skin? Do you have um, swelling all over, or swelling in your legs, hands? Uh, usually it's all over your body. Do you have irregular periods in women? For men, um, it is, you know, sometimes it's related to fatigue, depression, uh, and, and that type of um, a presentation, but you should be asked these questions when you go to see the doctor that's taking care of your thyroid. If you still have all the symptoms that you had before you were treated, and all they do is test the TSH, then they are not testing your thyroid hormones. Your thyroid hormones are T3 and T4. They should test both of those and look for the free, meaning the active T3 and T4, which is all your body sees. You have to have enough free T3 and free T4 for every cell in your body to actually burn calories, make energy. And if you don't have it, you'll be very sick in some way. Low thyroid can cause high cholesterol. That may be the only reason you have high cholesterol and you don't need a statin, you just need thyroid. So in general, we use one drug that has both T4 and T3 for women called Armour Thyroid. It has been 
I don't know why, but for some reason, insurance companies and, and otherwise, other people have dissed it and said, you shouldn't take it, that it causes problems, but I don't see that. In general, my female patients require Armour Thyroid to get rid of their symptoms and to bring up their free T3 and free T4. And by the way, your TSH is a terrible indirect test of your thyroid. It just, it's not a direct test of whether you're making those thyroid hormones or not. It just tells me whether you're suppressing your pituitary. So that's, that's not the test that you want. If your doctor just tests your T, TSH, not your free T3 and free T4, if they tell you that, oh, your TSH is too low, well, when I get thyroid and they're, and that, excuse me, and their T3, free T3 and free T4 are adequate, TSH is shut down. You don't need to stimulate your own thyroid if you're getting enough from your pill. So your TSH is low. That's how I know someone has enough thyroid besides their, besides their symptoms going away. So if they think your TSH is too low, then they don't understand how the thyroid works and how thyroid medication works, and you need to find somebody who does. And now they're just now accepting the fact that women can't convert T4 into T3 and need to be taking either Synthroid or uh, Levothyroxine with Lyothyronine, another prescription. I think it's more efficient to just give them both T3 and T4 in, um, in Armour Thyroid because they're in one pill and one filling cost for you. But also, I've been on Armour Thyroid since I was 23. And it has been hard to find a doctor to manage it. Once I was a physician, I had my, I educated my partners and then they helped me manage it. But in general, I, I know that Armour Thyroid works for women. I've seen it thousands of times in my practice. And even before I did bioidentical hormones, I treated thyroids. Because if your thyroid's off, you can't get pregnant. If your thyroid is low, then you're going to gain weight. If your thyroid's low, you're going to have high cholesterol. If your thyroid's low, you're going to be depressed and sad. I mean, there's so many other things you would have to take medicines for if your thyroid is not adequately treated, and you will not be healthy. It affects every cell in your body if you don't have adequate thyroid. So when your doctor says, oh my gosh, your TSH is so low, say thank you. That's how I know my thyroid is working if you're taking thyroid. So don't worry about that. These are all reassuring kind of things, but you have to stand up for yourself. If, some, if a doctor tries to scare you from something that has just made you feel great and normal again, then you need a different doctor. That's all there is to it. They clearly do not understand what's bothering you, and they're more interested in attacking another doctor than they are helping you. So I find that to be not what we were supposed to be doing in medicine. So now you have some answers. Now you have some education. We'll do some more of this next week with our next health cast. I have some more frequently asked questions that are generated oftentimes by primary care doctors. So please join us next week for that installment of how to answer your primary care doctor. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.